In this video, we'll trace the steps of lipid digestion. If you can imagine eating a meal like this one, there are lots of triglycerides here, uh, and the cream cheese, and the salmon, and the avocado. So how does your body digest those lipids and get them into the bloodstream so that they can be used by cells around the body? Let's take a look at how this works. As always, we begin the digestive process in the mouth. So you take a bite, you start to chew. That begins to mechanically break down the food into smaller particles. As you chew, you're also adding saliva into the mix, which moistens the food and gets it ready to travel down the esophagus and into the stomach. And finally, there's a little bit of enzymatic digestion of triglycerides that happens in the mouth. An enzyme called lingual lipase is produced by cells on the tongue. That word lingual means relating to the tongue, and that enzyme starts to break down triglycerides by cleaving individual fatty acids from the glycerol backbone. You'll see several more lipase enzymes that contribute to lipid digestion as we work our way through the digestive tract. And whenever you see that word, lipase, you know we're talking about an enzyme that digests lipids. So let's move on to the stomach now. You've swallowed that bite of food. It's mixed with saliva and lingual lipase, and it's going to travel down the esophagus and into the stomach. Here we have the mixing and churning that the stomach does so well with its large muscular walls that are going to continue to kind of break all those food particles up. And we have another lipase, gastric lipase, that's produced by cells of the stomach and also helps with enzymatic digestion of lipids. Lingual lipase also remains active in the stomach. It can tolerate that low pH um, that we find in the stomach. Um, and together, these two enzymes are going to be initiating enzymatic digestion of triglycerides. However, most of that process actually occurs in the small intestine. So let's move on to that. So just first, we'll have a quick overview of what's happening in the small intestine with lipids because it's a lot. Um, the first major step in the small intestine is emulsification, and that happens with the help of bile. This is the process where we're taking large lipid kind of globules and breaking them in a, down into smaller droplets. We also have the bulk of enzymatic digestion occurring here in the small intestine, thanks to lipases that are secreted from the pancreas. And then the products of lipid digestion need to be absorbed from here. And that happens with the help of my cells. So let's take a closer look at each of these processes. As the fat enters the small intestine, it's clustered in these large fat droplets or globules. And remember that fat is hydrophobic. It doesn't want to interact with the water in its, in its environment. So it clusters together in these big globules. Um, and emulsification is the process that breaks those large fat droplets into smaller droplets. And bile is instrumental in this process. Remember that bile is made in the liver and stored and secreted by the gallbladder. And bile has that property where it can interact with both water and fat. And that allows these bile salts to kind of cluster around smaller droplets and uh, break apart those large fat droplets into smaller droplets and help to disperse them into the watery environment of the small intestine. And that's important because it increases the surface area and gives more space for enzymes to come in and attach and break down the triglycerides. And that's the next major step of fat digestion. So we have emulsification, um, breaking large fat droplets into these smaller droplets, and then we have enzymatic digestion happening in here. So again, these are lipase enzymes. They're secreted from the pancreas into the small intestine. And this enzymatic digestion of triglycerides is taking the triglyceride structure, breaking fatty acids off of it, usually leaving a monoglyceride and a couple of free fatty acids, um, sometimes forming some free glycerol as well. So that's the enzymatic digestion of uh, triglycerides in the small intestine. Now we have these products of enzymatic digestion and we need to get them into the cells of the small intestine. So my cells help with that process. 
Um, and once again, bile plays a role here. So bile salts cluster around the products of fat digestion, forming these little structures called micelles. And being part of a micelle helps those fatty acids and mon monoglycerides move right up to the edge of this fresh border membrane, the edge of the microvilli of the enterocytes. And then they can just diffuse right across that membrane into the enterocytes that make up the intestinal wall. Now that the fatty acids and monoglycerides are inside the cells, what happens next depends on their size. If they're small, like the short chain and medium chain fatty acids, as well as any free glycerol, they can just be absorbed directly into the capillaries um, that are present in the villi of the small intestine. They're these tiny blood vessels in these villi. And just like we can absorb amino acids and monoglycerides like glucose into these capillaries, the small products of fat digestion can be absorbed here. But most of the products of fat digestion are either longer chain fatty acids or monoglycerides or cholesterol and fat soluble vitamins and they're larger structures. They can't be absorbed right into that capillary so they need to go through a more complex process and that's what's shown here in this diagram. So <clears throat> the first thing that happens is that the fatty acids and monoglycerides reform into triglycerides here and then they're incorporated into these larger structures called chylomicrons. And um, chylomicrons can then be absorbed into the lacteals, these lymph vessels that are present in the villi of the small intestine. And then they'll travel through the lymph system and eventually be delivered to the bloodstream. So I want to take a closer look at the structure of those chylomicrons because they're so important. Chylomicrons are one type of lipoprotein, which just means lipid transport vehicle. So these are structures that are responsible for shuttling lipids around through the body and the bloodstream or in lymph. Um, chylomicrons are the largest type of lipoprotein and they have the specific job of transporting lipids from the small intestine into the bloodstream. And you'll learn about some other types of lipoproteins later in this chapter. But all lipoproteins have the same basic structure that's shown here. Um, we have the triglycerides in the central core of the chylomicron. And we also have some esterified cholesterol. That just means cholesterol molecules with a fatty acid attached. So these are all like fat-soluble molecules um, clustered in, in this core of the chylomicron. And then the outer membrane of the chylomicron is made up mainly of phospholipids. And those are oriented so that their water-soluble heads are pointed towards the exterior. And their fat-soluble tails are pointed towards the interior. Embedded in that phospholipid membrane are also proteins that are called apolipoproteins. So these make for really nice, tidy packages of lipids that can travel easily through the watery environment of the blood and deliver the fats that you absorbed from the meal that you just ate around the body so that cells can use them.